Avenue here just off the corner of Knickerbocker. As you said, in Bedford-Stuyvesant, you can see firefighters fighting this fire from the outside, up on the roof, and fighting from tower ladders in the front. They have pulled all personnel out of this building because of the danger to personnel. This fire originally came in just before 11 o'clock and quickly grew to three alarms. We got some tape when we first pulled up on the scene. We were closer to the flames. We had heard reports that police officers were injured in these flames. We did see a couple police officers being loaded into an ambulance. We are hearing reports that they are being treated for smoke inhalation and that those police officers right now at this hour are stable and are being transported to a local hospital. Those are the only injuries that we've heard being listed. There you see shots of firefighters fighting this from the roof and working close in. This fire not yet under control. A three-alarm blaze on Jefferson Avenue in Brooklyn still being fought at this Transit hour. workers were injured this afternoon during a subway fire in a tunnel at Grand Concourse and 183rd Street. The conductor of a northbound D noticed something wrong with the train, so he discharged all passengers at 165th Street. Passengers had been discharged at 165th Street. Transit had determined they possibly had a potential problem and evacuated uh, the passengers prior to any condition arising that would jeopardize the passengers. As the conductor continued north heading into the yard, the train was filled with heavy smoke. One transit worker was burned as he tried to isolate a grid beneath the train and was hit with an electrical arc. If there were people on the train, it would have been a whole different story. Because just getting, even if there were 100 people, which is a light train, that's, that's 12, people, 12 people per car. Uh, just getting them out of this and then using it to, uh, to stretch a line would have been uh, very difficult. The fire began at a plastics factory on 30th Drive in Astoria and spread to an adjoining apartment building, forcing it to be evacuated. The fire started in the outside lot of Pop Display, a sign company, but it quickly spread to this neighboring apartment building, forcing frightened residents to flee. We thought that we would lose that entire building. They confined the fire. It's on every floor of that building, but it's in the rear area only, the closest to the factory. Firemen rushed to their rescue, getting everyone out without injury. Others had to be kept back from going home for their own safety. Part of the problem was exploding propane scared everyone. The smoke and heat beat them back. Several firefighters suffered from heat exhaustion. One was treated for burns to both of his knees. The blaze started in an outside storage shed is unusual. We're concerned about how the fire started. There. In that yard, there should be... <coughs> no reason for a fire starting like that. 32 families are temporarily displaced, although some may be able to return soon. And while the fire disrupted lives, some people found happiness after the fire when their pets were rescued and returned. I'm happy. More than 200 firefighters responded to the five alarm blaze, one suffered burns on his knees, and five others had to be treated for heat exhaustion and smoke inhalation but they saved everyone. A fire on the tracks, possibly caused by trash, stalled those two trains for about an hour until one could be backed up, the other moved forward, and the passengers released from their smoky confines. Emergency medical technicians treating scores of subway passengers, from infants to the elderly, trapped on board two trains, the A and C trains, stalled near the East New York subway station for about an hour. Combating panic among passengers trapped on smoky subway cars was the job for riders like Robert Castro while firefighters battled the blaze. The fire area itself was approximately 25 by 100, which would be a large fire above ground. Down below ground, it's extremely difficult. The cause of the fire is likely trash, but possibly construction supplies. An investigation is underway. The fire broke out around 8.35 this morning, sending thick black smoke out of the transit substation. For nearly an hour. Passengers sat directly below the fire in a southbound F train without power until they were evacuated. Four Con Edison feeder lines sit underneath the substation. Power has been knocked out to a large chunk of the Lower East Side. Electricity is off between 7th and 14th Streets from 1st Avenue to the East River. Officials say they just don't know how long buildings and businesses will be in the dark. The two big effects that it will have now is number one on the, on the subway system. Uh, since there are transformers in the building, and then number two on electrical power, since it just happens to be that right below the building in that area, there are four Con Ed feeders that service this area. Eight people, seven of them firefighters, have suffered minor injuries. Officials say the fire is hard to put out because it's located in the basement and because firefighters cannot use water. We're hoping that the foam puts it out. We think it will because it's a confined space. We've got to worry about transformers that are down there. We've got to worry about a lot of different 
things that uh, prevent us from just going in there and putting it out as quickly as we might like. But uh, we'll get it. No passenger injuries were reported. There were eight injuries at the fire, a civilian and seven firefighters, none seriously. Power was cut off to some homes and businesses in the surrounding area, in some instances trapping people in apartment houses. Firefighters helped seniors up the stairs of the LaGuardia houses where a brownout cut off elevator and water service in the nine-building complex. Now I'm waiting for a nice man to carry me back up. We removed 17 people from 23 buildings. We had 10 in one elevator. Everybody seems to be all right. No medical emergencies Things at this time. Shortly after midnight in what used to be an old firehouse near Gracie Mansion on the East River. The two-alarm fire was brought under control in a few hours, but crews spent the day putting out hot spots. No one was injured, but the structure was completely destroyed. The fire marshal is investigating the oh, cause of the blaze. 40 in the blaze. morning, they received a knock on the door to say there was a report of a fire. They came, gave a signal 1075, which means we'll get four engines and three trucks. When I arrived, the fire was uh, fully involved with the second floor. Uh, units from ladder 126 had to bypass the fire to go to the attic, and they removed three victims that were seriously injured, and we have two minor injuries for civilians. Mm -hmm. We have a total of eight firefighters that have minor injuries and a lieutenant. Uh, that was the reason for the third alarm. We had the fire under control, but we needed relief for the members that were injured and for the heat and the uh, strain of the fire. Now, there was a problem with the fire hydrant, but I understand there was another one close by. Yes, we have one fire hydrant on the corner that was out of service and marked by the units when they inspected, but there was one right across the street, so there was no delay in getting water for, on the fire at first. Any idea of the cause of the fire, Chief? At this time, it's being investigated by the fire marshals. You were telling us before that the uh, I see them up there now trying to determine uh, how hot, hot the fire was and and how long it was going on? Yes, they uh, used their forensic uh, knowledge to uh, try to investigate and determine where the fire started and if there were any accelerants or any accidental causes. They will determine if it was accidental or suspicious. News Copter 7 was over the scene at East 117th Street and Lexington Avenue soon after the flames broke out on the top floor at about 6.30 this morning. Two firefighters suffered minor injuries and were taken to nearby hospitals. The cause of this fire is under investigation. Started this afternoon in a two-story house. Investigators think it broke out on the top floor of the building. And because the houses are so close together in that area, flames also spread to other homes. The cause of the fire is now under investigation. We're looking at uh, the smoke emanating from uh, a fire at a building in the South Bronx on Tinton Avenue in 156th Street to be exact. Fire began on the right side of that uh, building. Apparently, that portion of the building was unoccupied. And we're told also that uh, the people who were living in the building were successfully taken out of the building before the firefighters began to uh, begin to douse those flames. It looks like they have it pretty well under uh, control right now. Uh, still, obviously, pockets of flames that still have to be fought, but uh, firefighters Again, New York's bravest, once again, doing a very fine job uh, in a very dangerous situation. So that's the situation mm -hmm. at that uh, fire there on uh, Tinton Avenue. Just good to know that everyone got out of that building. With the cut of a ribbon, the city opened its first newly constructed emergency medical service station since the merger of the fire department and EMS. Located in Williamsburg, right next to Woodhull Hospital, the more than $1 million facility was built as part of the city's effort to speed response time by making ambulances more community-based. When we get more stations online throughout the city, we feel we can get the EMTs and paramedics to be in service quick, uh, quicker, get them back in service quicker so to make the whole operation more efficient. The fire department wants to build 40 new stations throughout the city. Firefighters are in the process of battling a two-alarm blaze in Staten Island Zoo. You can make out firefighters atop one tower ladder. They have two tower ladders in it set up in an operation. This fire broke out shortly after 3 o'clock this afternoon. You can make out over on the uh, right-hand side water pouring in from that second tower ladder. A very smoky situation in a warehouse. Fire has just spread through and completely gutted it. This is off of Richmond Terrace. The good news, if there is any, no reports of any injuries. A lot of fire department apparatus in northern uh, Staten Island, however. Reporting live in Chopper 4, I'm Tom Prick. Back to you in the studio, Sue.
Dave Aslan, probationary firefighter. I'm here at the New York City Fire Department's Bureau of Training, located at Randall's Island, and we would all just like to say, Fire sent up a billowing column of smoke that turned midday to dusk. It sent victims scrambling for medical attention or for consolation from the brownstone at 535 West 149th. The fire spread to an adjacent 36-unit apartment building. Fire officials say the pre-war construction made it difficult to contain. Fire gets across into the other side. It's a two separate wings. We call it an H-type building with a throat in the middle where the fire gets from one side to the other. So just a very difficult, long, prolonged operation. So many injuries because the guys have just worked so hard for so long and just really exhausted. The one fellow might be a little worse than everybody else, and he's the one we're concerned about. That firefighter, a lieutenant, was seriously injured by smoke inhalation. More we're concerned about. The colleagues suffered less serious problems. More than three dozen families were burned out of their homes. This has been a very, very bad fire. Uh, but for the fact that the fire department responded in two minutes, we probably would be looking at a lot of fatalities in this fire. The cause? Nothing officially was taking the bus home and suddenly went into labor. So the bus driver actually went off of the route and took her here to Ralph Avenue. Then a total stranger helped her off the bus and right into the firehouse. And these two ladies burst in the door saying, this lady's having a baby, this lady's having a baby, you got to help her. The next thing they knew, firefighter Stephen O'Sullivan, Chris Connor, and Kenneth Kennedy, as well as Lieutenant Tom Frizzalone and Proby Charles Hendry, turned into OBGYN. They used this cot as a hospital bed and pulled out the OBGYN kit. And we were taking apart the OBGYN kit to get everything ready for the birth, and she asked us, are you reading a manual over there? <laughs> Most of these firefighters sat in the delivery room during their own children's birth, but this was the first time they had to deliver a child. I was the catcher. What I did was cut the umbilical cord. I was the Lamiles coach. <laughs> I was basically uh, supervising and overseeing the operation. Uh, I was basically one of the nurses helping out Stevie and Chris with the delivery. Janedra did not have a name for her baby, so as a special tribute to the firefighters, she promised to pick their names out of a hat. And the first name is? Tom. <laughs> Who's Tom? You remember, Tom Frizz alone was a supervisor. And the middle name? And Steve. Steve was the catcher. As for four pound, 14 ounce Tom Steven, he's doing great. Both mother and son are expected to go home tomorrow. Soundview in Lafayette gutted a series of stores along the block. One firefighter suffered a minor eye injury but was treated and released. All of the stores were closed at the time. No one else was hurt. No word yet on the cause. Oh, From the air, building. thick smoke enveloped 31 West Union Square. At 9.07 this morning, fire officials say a blaze in a 10th floor commercial establishment quickly spread to the 11th and 12th floors. One reason for the spread, the standpipe bringing water through the building broke, and firefighters had to manually string a line outside. The wind was at their back, pushing the fire away from them. When they lost water, they had knocked some of the fire down. Then they had to stretch a line up, as you can see, the outside of the building to get water and put the rest of the fire out. Still, firefighters had a tough time of it. Three were injured. The 16-story building is home to hundreds of residents. This is at 2098 Starling Avenue in Parkchester. You can see a fire burning out of control in a one-story building. Fire started in the rear of the building but has now spread throughout. Looks like this building is going to be completely destroyed, judging by the looks of this fire. Heavy smoke and fire continue. You can see we have a ladder in operation right now. A firefighter is trying to gain a good vantage point for fighting this. There are some sparks that tend to fly up every once in a while. They are cutting through the fence to gain entry to the rear of the building. Now, the call came in around 548, the 911 call. It quickly escalated to a three alarm. Now, this could go, judging by the looks of this fire, could go to a Just fourth about alarm. 15 minutes away from the start of the 1999 New York City Marathon. And at the head of the line, to ensure a fair start, New York City's police and firefighters join arms at the start line but they also have their own competition going. Since 1982, the New York City Police and Fire Departments have taken part in a friendly rivalry, running the New York City Marathon for the Mayor's Cup. For the first 15 years, New York City's bravest dominated. But in 1997, New York's finest tasted victory for the first time. But last year, the bravest had an extra incentive to win back the cup. They were running in memory of teammate Scott LaPietra, who died in the line of duty. And when in fact they did, in a combined time of 33 hours, 20 minutes. Hi, we are here, and here are New York's bravest right here in front of me. New York's finest are behind.
continues now and we know there was the competition between the police and fire departments this is the uh, fire commissioner handing the mayor's trophy to the police commissioner of new york city the police for the second time in marathon history have won that concludes our coverage thank you so much our congratulations to all the winners thank you everybody see you next time each and every day members of the new york city fire department's ems division are called upon to save lives but yesterday was no ordinary day for EMT Ted Smith, you see. It was his first day on the street, and it's his first call that he and his patient will never forget. 52-year-old Luther Matthews had suffered a massive heart attack, and according to both EMTs, he was medically dead. He was in cardiac arrest and defibrillated him, and uh, you know, all of a sudden he's, he's talking to us again. But moments later, his heart stopped again, and for a second time, they used a defibrillator. It was kind of surprising that uh, he was going to fade out like that. Right. Well, then uh, after one shock, he just came right back. Today, Luther Matthews is recovering here at Harlem Hospital. And his wife says both paramedics stayed at the hospital to explain what happened. And until today, she was unaware it was Ted Smith's first day, first call, first life saved. I can't even explain it. I, when they told me how it happened and how he recovered, I was overjoyed. I'm thankful, very thankful, many blessings. It's a pretty great way to start your career, isn't it? Uh, you could wait a long time to have a call with a result this great. The fact that someone as new as he was, was able to perform so well is really a tribute to him and to the academy. And for Ted, it will take some time for this incident to set in. But in his job, time is of the essence. Hey, Ted. This is my... Uh my fire department uh, jacket. All oh, right, that, pretty nice. That I got from uh, the commissioner himself. Hey, the other day. Chief it's, Jim it's Ryan. Terrific. Chief Jim Ryan. And, and uh, here's ladder company number five. Number five. That's right around the corner from here, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and hey, Dad, take a look at this on the back. It says FDNY on the back. Oh, oh, that's terrific. Right. Very cool. Yeah, that's Very terrific. nice, James. And I will wear it proudly because uh, those guys do some job. And you got that for what reason? Uh, because I uh, sucked up to the commissioner. And, uh, you know, I like now, your honesty. Now, if I sucked up to the commissioner, mm -hmm. you know, it says Chief Jim Ryan here. Mm -hmm. Right. Gail, our executive producer, got one that said Big Chief. Oh. Wow. wow. At any rate, what I wanted to say, I want to show this off. I'm very proud of it because uh, uh, New York's bravest are a terrific uh, bunch of people, and uh, they do a, a job on a regular basis, mm -hmm. uh, which means an awful lot to our lives and our property. Absolutely. My brother-in-law is retired from the fire from department. The fire department. Yeah. A, a terrific uh, bunch of people, and uh, we are very proud of them, and I'm very proud to have received this from the commission. Shanice has a plastic anemia and is waiting for a bone marrow match. Since there aren't enough African-American bone marrow donors, her family and the firefighters are trying to get the word out. Everything is coming from the heart, so when stuff comes from the heart, it's good. She impacts all of us individuals who have, who have kids, uh, we count our blessings, uh, you know, uh, our kids are healthy, and uh, it also makes us feel good uh, that we have an opportunity to, to, to help her out and, uh, you know, make one of her wishes come true. That was to help me get better. I'm a, a fire dog, they want to help me too. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a bone marrow donor, Please call 1-800-MARROW-2 for more information. Trapped in the rubble, dozens of firefighters race to a building collapse, but when the dust clears, one person is dead, several others are hurt. 
third floor of this three-story residential building still under construction gave way, trapping 13 workers inside. Fire crews say the rear of the building at Lee and Middleton Streets folded like a stack of cards. The uh, top floor collapsed and it uh, collapsed into the second floor and the second floor collapsed into the first floor and so on, right down into the basements. The workers were pouring cement to create a third floor when metal reinforcements collapsed, sending 13 workers on different floors falling to a basement filled with two feet of wet cement, which acted like quicksand. Rescue crews had to pull the victims free from a hazardous goop that threatened to swallow the workers. We had to roll them over, slide a backboard under them, just like we're trained, and we slide them back on, and, and it's, you have to, like, break a vacuum. It's, you know, the guy is, like, stuck, uh, half his body's in, and it takes, I mean, four or five guys, you gotta, like, break, 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 break a vacuum. Onlookers in this Hasidic Williamsburg enclave watched as dazed and injured workers emerged from the rubble. This man's face was encrusted with dried cement. You can see the shock on his face. Another victim suffered deep cuts, others broken bones. One worker was pronounced dead at Woolhull Hospital. Rescue crews deserve credit for working quickly under harrowing conditions. As they searched for victims, the unstable rear wall of the building was shaking, and crews had to dodge falling cinder blocks. So you were scared? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd be lying if I said we weren't. I mean, we had to, you know, you try to look up and you try to, you know, look up and, and work, and, and it's tough. And like I said, we're working in, like, knee-deep wet cement. Tell you one thing, we decided to come to Ladder 16, Engine 39, to have Thanksgiving dinner with a bunch of firefighters. As you can see, no one's home. The turkey, however, we're going to come in here and show you this, the turkey is cooked, but there are a lot of plates there, and no one is here to eat. That's because Ladder 16 and Engine 39 are out on runs. This is what it's like in New York on Thanksgiving. There's no rest for the weary, even though it is Thanksgiving. While most of us are home with their loved ones, there's an awful lot of people who spend their day helping others, like the firefighters with Ladder Company 112 in Bushwick. This evening, Bernard Floody and his ladder company were attending to a water leak. But earlier today, Floody, Ira Thorner, Dan Gills, Richard Duffy, and Ronald Broom saved a man's life. It's a team effort. Now, you never thought about your own safety? You never thought about anything but helping this guy? No, not really. No, that's our job. That's how everybody operates here. It doesn't know? matter whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas. It doesn't matter what day it is. Any day, any time. Well, thank you, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Penny. You tell. For the men, it's all in a day's work. The fire on Piling Street was brought under control, and the man they saved is in stable condition at the burn unit of the Cornell Medical Center. All you heard was glass breaking, glass breaking, and you couldn't see nothing at all. And you and Ronnie and the lieutenant never thought about anything but helping this guy? No, no, we got, you know, had to get him out of there and make sure we got out of there. That was our main concern. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, thank you very much. Congratulations. You all right. So at firehouses all over the city, it's catch a Thanksgiving dinner when you can. If that water boils, can you throw the potatoes in? Sure. Thank you. Honey Bayonne was cooking up tonight's Thanksgiving dinner when the bells went off. So the stuffing, gravy, potatoes, and turkey had to wait. And a scene like this is repeated time and time again all over our city. But don't think for a second they're not appreciated. Let's go back to Bushwick, where the guys from Ladder 112 helped the family with a water leak. They helped us out. They showed up the water, and we got to do something about the stream. Would you say Happy Thanksgiving to them? Happy Thanksgiving, fellas. And that's all we want to say from Fox 5. Happy Thanksgiving to all of the firefighters, the cops, the sanitation workers, and everyone working tonight. This was the scene seconds after the collapse. One worker was left dangling from the line that had snapped. His partner was harnessed inside the scaffold itself. Each man hanging by a single rope, 15 stories above the street. Firefighters and police emergency units converged on the Upper West Side as the men dangled motionless, terrified to move a muscle. On the sidewalk, hundreds of spectators held their breath as rescuers were lowered from the roof. Firefighter Tom Foley rescued the man on the rope. A lot of times it's mayhem and you got people screaming and stuff, especially in fire conditions. But this guy kept his head. Yeah, and he was really easy to work with. Not only were they in danger themselves of possibly falling, uh, the scaffold could have fallen, uh, portions of the scaffold could have fallen on them. The spectators cheered as the men made it safely to the ground. They were strapped into stretchers and rushed to St. Luke's Hospital. Both men suffered only minor injuries. It's the best job in the world. I wouldn't trade it for anything.
This evening, Midtown tourists were treated to a very unusual sight. One of the Times Square electrical billboards caught fire. It happened to be in the same building where ABC broadcast Good Morning America in 2020. The ABC cameras captured the fire. Firemen, of course, quickly extinguished the flames, and nobody was hurt. They just got to see a big sight in Times Square. For decades, members of the New York City Fire Department have been called New York City's bravest. It's an honor that you've earned, it's an honor that you deserve, and this is a, an occasion on which we really reflect on the meaning of just exactly how you've earned the title New York City's bravest. On behalf of the citizens of the city, I once again want to offer to the families of all of those firefighters our love, our support, our care and our deep respect.